around Dodge City and in the territory on West, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with a U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. Gunsmoke, starring William Conrad, the story of the violence that moved west with young America, and the story of a man who moved with it. I'm that man, Matt Dillon, the United States Marshal, the first man they look for and the last they want to meet. It's a chancy job, and it makes a man watchful and a little lonely. This is Frank Knight speaking for the world's most honored watch, Longines. In the conquest of the Old West, men won fame through feats of bravery and daring. Today, things are different, but fame can still be won. It's wonderful to win a Nobel Prize in science, a Pulitzer Award in literature, an Olympic gold medal in sports. In the field of time, did you know that Longines watches have worn more great public honors than any other watch in the world? This is true. The highest authorities have ranked Longines watches as the finest achievement in the science and art of watchmaking. Yet, for a surprisingly modest cost, you may own or proudly give a Longines, the world's most honored watch, the world's most honored gift, styled with distinction, cased in precious metal, promising a lifetime of faultless timekeeping. Visit your authorized Longines Whitnor jeweler. He will be honored to serve you. Mr. Dillon? Yeah, Chester. You don't suppose that stream has gone and dried itself right out of the prairie, do you? No, it just seems like it. We'll be coming across at any time now. Well, I sure do hope so. I'm dried inside out. I got some water left in my canteen. Oh, no, sir. It ain't drinking water I need, Mr. Dillon. It's my feet that's burning up. Well, you'll live. Well, sure. I'll live. There ain't no question about that. But I sure would like to get these boots off and get to soaking. Guess we're coming to it all right. I remember them trees. Yeah. Hey, look at there, Mr. Dillon. There's other folks there. Yeah. Yeah, there sure are. What in the world? Why, they're fixing... They were going to lynch that man. Well, you sure did scare him off, firing over the heads that way. Look at him ride off. Yeah, but one of them isn't. Come on, let's get on there. Cut his arms loose, Chester. I will. There we go. Now we'll get that gag out of your mouth. There we go. Cowards. Lousy running cowards. You all right? In a couple of minutes, they'd have finished me for sure. Well, you don't look hurt none to me. I ain't hurt. Just ought to thank you some for that. Some? You know who it was? I sure I know. He ain't never gonna forget neither. Well, what were their names? Why, they... Yeah. You're a lawman. Yeah, a U.S. Marshal out of Dodge. <laughs> well, ain't that something? Getting my neck saved by a lawman. Any objections? I guess it ain't something I can be too particular about. Who are you? And who are those men? Yeah, I'll tell you, Marshal. This is something I'm particular about. What do you mean? It ain't my habit to tell nothing to a lawman. Don't approve of it, you might say. Mr. Dillon? Yeah. Look at here. Hanging out of his saddlebag. Huh? Let's see. It's just an empty sack, Marshal. A money sack. Says Wichita Bank on there. Well, what do you know about that? I know more than I did a minute ago. Three men robbed that bank, mister. Huh. You got three guesses then, ain't you, Marshal? 
I don't need more than one about you. Come on, Chester, let's take him in. insurance that pays and keeps on paying. Mutual of Omaha, hospital, surgical, and income protection insurance plans that pay liberal, long-term benefits. Here's what you need. You need dependable protection that pays promptly. Low-cost plans by Mutual Benefit Health and Accident Association. Mutual of Omaha. Call your local Mutual of Omaha agent listed in the yellow pages. Or write Mutual of Omaha, Omaha, Nebraska, for details on protection that pays and keeps on paying. Mutual of Omaha pays so promptly it is the first company ever to pay out more than $1 billion in health and accident benefits in its first 50 years. Find out how this low-cost protection can help you. Write Mutual of Omaha, Omaha, Nebraska. You take care of the horses, Chester. All right, sir. All right, climb down, you. In here. You gonna lock me up? Come on. You've made a big mistake, Marshal. I wouldn't worry about it if I were you. I ain't gonna do no worry. All right, get in there. Oh, I'll go in easy, Marshal. Nice and easy. I'll be coming out easy, too. Don't count on it. It's a fact, Marshal. My boys ain't gonna leave me sitting here very long. They'll have me out of here right soon. You the head man of your outfit? <laughs> ain't many folks living who'd argue about that. Your name's Brass. Pete Brass. You heard about me? Yeah, I've heard about you. Besides that Wichita bank, I've heard you're wanted in three states. Well, now, Marshal, there are some states I just ain't had time to get around to yet. Well, you just might not make it either. I'll have Chester bring you some supper. Hey, wait a minute, Marshal. What? What is it? You don't want me to get away. You'd have done better to let them high binders lynch me. Oh, you figure you'd be better off? Not me, Marshal. You... You're going to feel mighty foolish after my boys get me out. I didn't notice your boys getting you out of that rope this morning. Oh, our boys didn't have time to hear of it. You see, a lynching is a sudden thing. You you borrow a horse and a couple of hotheads want to string you up. It ain't time for word to get around. My boys didn't know. Now, there's plenty of time now. That's what I mean, Marshal. My boys are real good at figuring. They'll study out a real nice plan. I ain't going to be here long. When my boys come, it's going to be real hard on you. Yeah? I'll tell you something, mister. It might be kind of hard on your boys, too. I'll say this, Jess. You sure didn't pick out much of a town to get yourself locked up in. It ain't so bad, Mill. I see two, three saloons right down the street there. Saloons ain't what we're looking for. Hell, there's a marshal's office. That sure don't look like much. They probably got brass locked up in the back of it. Hey, hey, there's the bank, Mill. We ain't going anywhere near that bank. Looks like it'd be real easy. Listen, Jess, you gotta keep your mind on what we're here for. To get Brass out of jail, that's all. Sure, Mill, sure. How are we gonna do it? That's what we gotta figure. You know, we could bust in there tonight shooting. We could have a horse ready. Uh-huh. We might just get shot doing it like that. Well, if we ain't gonna shoot him out, how are we gonna get him? Got to learn about this town. Got to work it out real careful. Uh, shooting's easier. Now, you listen to me, Jess. 
We gotta have a plan. All right, Neil. All right. Where are we gonna get one? Oh. We're gonna start in right here. Well, you said we wasn't looking for saloons. Not for drinking, just for listening. Come on. You telling me not to have a drink, you stick to beer till we get this thing settled. And you drink it slow, you hear? Well, look out, Milk, them doors. And as soon as you're able to get on your horse, you'll ride right out of town. You got that straight? I got it. All right, then. Yes, it's half, Matt. No, thanks, Kitty. Here you are. Come on back, Matt. He's not going to cause any more trouble. You finish your drink. All right, Kitty. I guess I will with that. You see that, Milt? You see that big fella throw that man out of there like he was a sack of meal? Yeah. He's a fella we got out smart. Marshal. Come on, let's go in. Happened in Death Valley in the blazing desert sun. No others dared to do it, so there could be only one. Just one that passed the killing grind of sun and wind and sand. The test that proved this new car wax the finest in the land. Turtle wax, turtle wax, turtle wax. Reader's Digest ad tells the story of the amazing turtle wax protective power that kept cars' colors shining bright even in fiery Death Valley sun. Just one waxing of turtle wax with new sun stop gives your car a beautiful hard shell finish guaranteed to last up to one full year. It's quick and easy to turtle wax your car yourself. Remember, just one waxing of turtle wax with sun stop lasts up to one full year. Turtle Wax gives a hard shell finish. Turtle Wax gives a hard shell finish. Turtle Wax. What'll it be, gents? I'll have a shot. Beer. Two beers. Coming up. Thanks. Hey, barkeep. Yeah? We just seen that bed Marshal throw a fella out of here. Marshal didn't go fool around. He in the habit of mussing up your customers like that? If they get to acting smart with Miss Kitty, he is. Kitty? Uh, that saloon gal sitting over there with her? I'd be careful how I talked about her, mister. The Marshal's uh, partial to her, is he? He don't like nobody to cause her trouble. You're sure about that? Yeah, mister, I'm sure. You'd better be sure about it, too. Well, that's interesting, friend. Mighty interesting. Kitty. Well, thank you, Chester. But you really don't have to say nice things about me just because I'm going away from you. Yeah, well, now, it ain't that at all. Why, uh-huh. you'd be just pretty if you were staying. <laughs> ain't that so, Miss <laughs> Yeah, that's right, Chester. Now, see here, boys. I can stand a little chivalry, but this is too much. Especially from you three outlaws. Well. I'll <laughs> Now, Kitty, it seems to me we're acting in a fine, upright manner. We're giving you a farewell dinner. We're being as nice as we know how. Yeah, that's just it. When you all start acting so nice, I begin to worry. <laughs> it doesn't sound like she appreciates us, Doc. <laughs> no, Matt, it doesn't. It doesn't at that. Oh, well, if my company isn't wanted, maybe I'd better not ride along with her on the stage tomorrow. Why, you old faker. Nothing could keep you from coming along with me. You gonna be gone long, Doc? No, Chester, just a couple of days. I've had some things to tend to up there in Larned for some time. Figured I might as well make the trip with Kitty for company. But now... You know, we better stop teasing her, Doc. She's got that look in her eye. Well, I ain't been a teasing, Miss Kitty. Not a particle. Well, I know you haven't, Chester. 
So here, you can finish up the pie. Well, say now, I thank you. Well, look at that. Matt. Yeah, Kitty. Are those two men at that table right over there. What? Behind you. You know them? Uh, no, I don't. Why? Well, maybe it's nothing, but they've been sitting there staring at us all through dinner. It's as though they were listening to everything we said. Oh. Maybe I better go find out what's on their minds. Excuse me a minute. Yeah. Uh, you men seem kind of interested in what we've been talking about over there. Little lady told you, huh? Yeah, that's right. She told me. You know, she's mighty pretty. Shut up, Jess. We ain't breaking no law, Marshal. No, but if you've got any business with me, it's better to come straight out with it. That's just what we'll do, Marshal. When the time comes, we'll come straight out with it. Father's Day is on its way, and here's a quick quiz for the ladies. What type of man is the head of your house? Is he rugged in the great outdoors? Does he help with household chores? Whichever type he is, he's bound to be the Old Spice type. So you and the kids treat him to Old Spice by Shulton, finest grooming aids a man can use. Give Old Spice aftershave lotion, brisk and bracing, happiest ending a shave ever had, one dollar. Or something new in sets, Aftershave lotion, men's cologne, and stick deodorant. Handy for travel in a bright red box, $2. Or splurge with the captain's box. Five great grooming aids in one handsome box, $5. There's a wide selection of Old Spice gifts, priced from $1 to $7. Finest grooming aids a man can use. Old Spice means quality. Said the captain to the bosun. And for the package with the ship that sails the ocean. Well, I don't know about you, Doc, but I'm kind of sorry I thought about making this trip. Yeah, a ride like this doesn't make you want to do much traveling, Kitty. Boy, oh, you're right about that. It feels like the driver's trying to show us how fast he can go. I don't think it makes much difference, Kitty. A jolt's a jolt on a trip like this. <laughs> Going slow just makes them last longer. Yeah, well, I guess you're right. Hey, maybe you heard us, Doc. How's that? Well, we're slowing down. Oh, let me see. I look out here. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, we... Sit quiet, Kitty. What's the matter? We're not slowing down. We're stopping. It's a holdup. A holdup? Now, don't you worry, Kitty. You won't be hurt. Driver, just keep your hands up high. Yes, you covered. Okay, ma'am. Come on out. I have nothing of value. Not you, her. Me? Now, see here. Don't make me do no arguing. Come on out, Miss Kitty. But you are the... You come out, lady, or I'll fix this old geezer so his doctor won't never be able to help him. Kitty, don't do it. It's all right, Doc. That's better. Now, Doc, it's your turn. Don't you hurt him. Why, well, I ain't gonna hurt him none. I'm I'm just gonna send him back to Dodge. And a message for that big marshal. I'm not going and leave her. You better. Or there ain't no chance for her at all. Or for you neither. Go on, Doc. That's more like it. You head right back there and tell the marshal that I'm in the mood to do some horse trading. I thought you was Where's Matt? Well, he just went down to Jones' store for a minute. Uh, Chester. A pair of his pants was just about wore through. Chester. He's getting himself some new ones. Chester, I've got to see him right away. Oh, Doc, I saw you walking into the office. What are you doing back here? They've got Kitty. What? Who's got Kitty? They held up the stage. What? About an hour out of town. Matt, they're holding her for Pete Brass. And you've got to do something. All right, Doc. All right, just slow down. Now, tell me just how it happened. They held up the stage and took Kitty off. They say they won't let her go until you turn Brass loose. 
Now, that's all there is to it. Well, you know who they were? No, I don't know their names. If they, they weren't hiding anything. I could recognize their faces. They were the two men who were so interested in us at Delmonica's last night. Oh. You know where they're holding her? Uh, no, Matt, I don't. They just had to have Brass ride down the stage road. Until he does, they're holding Kitty. Now, you've got to do something, Matt, because this... Mr. Dillon will have let Brass out. No, Chester. Uh, but, Mr. Dillon, they've got Miss Kitty. I know they've got her, Chester. Well, aren't you going to help her, Matt? And I'm going to try. Well, then, let's... Listen to me, both of you. Now, we don't know where they've got her, do we? But, well, no, 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 we don't. And it's no sure thing that they'll let her go even if Brass goes loose. Well, well, well I guess you're right. Well, what do you plan to do? Wait. Wait? Why, Mr. Dillon, we They're can't... They're not likely to hurt her as long as she can be some good to them. If they don't hear from her, they'll have to try again. So I've got to wait. Mr. Dillon, I sure do hope you know what you're doing. Uh, yeah, so do I, Chester. So do I. <laughs> Improved case site tune-up. The tune-up in a can. Morning, sir. Help you? I uh, hope so. Engine, huh? Hasn't got the pickup of a kitty car. Well, it's misfiring some. Some? Mr. Half my plugs are on strike. Improved case site tune-up. The tune-up in a can. Eh, probably your rings are sticking. Maybe your valves. Uh, when was that carburetor cleaned? <laughs> Not too recently. Improved case site tune-up. The tune-up in a can. <laughs> Your car's not in such bad shape. All you need's a tune-up. A tune-up? A $50 tune-up? Now, relax. We'll add a can of case site tune-up to your gasoline, another can to your oil. That'll clean your whole firing zone. Valves, rings, plugs, carburetor, everything. Mister, you're pulling it on. No, no, you pour it in. Dollar and a quarter a can at most any service station. Results guaranteed or double your money back. Improved case side tune-up. The tune-up in a can. Sure glad you decided to do the cooking, Miss Kitty. Maybe you'll choke on it, and it'll be worth it. Don't seem to me like you're acting too friendly. Any reason why I should? Sure, Miss Kitty. You and me. You and me. That's the way it's going to be. It's never going to be like that. You kind of caught me that big marshal. Hmm? That's none of your business. You think he's going to get you out of this? He'll be here. Sure, he's going to be here. Milt went down to talk to him, make sure he'd be here. I know that. Then we both know it. I know something else. Don't you want to hear about it? Not much. Well, you better want to. I done me some figuring. Mild ain't the only one to do the figuring. He thinks he is. Well, sure he does. This time I done some figuring all by myself. I got it all worked out about that big marshal. What do you mean? Even if he comes... Even if he lets Brass go, he ain't going to get you. How do you plan to stop him? Why, there ain't nothing to it after the figuring's done. How's that? I just ain't going to let him ride out of here, that's all. Getting pretty close now, Mr. Dillon. Yeah, Chester. Right along in here. You think they'll really show up with Miss Kitty? Well, if they want this man, they will. They really got you squirming, ain't they, Marshal? Don't worry about it, Brass. I told you, my boys, that study it out. They haven't finished it yet. Mr. Dillon, there, under them trees. Yeah. Come on. Look there. I can see Miss Kitty and one of them fellas. Just keep your eyes open, Chester. 
All right, Marshal, that's far enough. Let her go, mister. Well, now, let's do this nice and regular-like. Dismount, all of you. Reyes? Yeah, Milk. You all right? Ain't nothing wrong with me, except my hands are tied. Walk over here, we'll fix that. Let her go. All right, Marshal. Can't say I blame you, mighty pretty little lady. She ain't going no place. You all right, Mr. Gillis? Yeah. Not yet, you ain't. Matt. Oh, Matt. It's all right, Katie. You got both of them. Yeah, it's all over. This one's still alive, Mr. Dillon. It... It don't seem right. No, it doesn't seem right. Red Brass will untie your hands now. Untie him? You letting me go? No. But you're gonna need your hands to dig two graves with for your boys before you go back to jail. Chester, put down that gun. I can't, honey. Mr. Dillon told me to practice. Oh, I don't care what Matt Dillon says. Mrs. Dennis Weaver says no guns in the house. But Mr. Dillon told me. Oh, here's our picture in Look Magazine. And it says, Chester of Gunsmoke and his wife, known in private life as Mr. and Mrs. Dennis Weaver. But Mr. Dillon told me, honey. Now, does Maverick practice fast draws around the house? No. He helps his wife cook dinner. Well, now, ain't that something. Oh, here's your old friend Doc here in Look. And the Rifleman. And there's Yancey Derringer. Well, forevermore. Well, oh, ain't there wise purdy, though? You know, everybody ought to get luck and take a look at them, because you know that girls was made to be loved. Girls. Oh, Chester, you show Matt Dillon a copy and let him see what other Western heroes and their wives do around the house. Well, all right, music lover. I'll be seeing you. Where are you going? Down to newsstand to buy a copy of new issue of Look Magazine. Why? Well, for Mr. Dillon. Gunsmoke. Produced and directed by Norman McDonald, stars William Conrad as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal. The story was specially written for Gunsmoke by Marion Clark with editorial supervision by John Meston. Featured in the cast were Harry Bartell, Vic Perrin, James Nusser, and Ken Lynch. Harley Bear is Chester, Howard McNear is Doc, and Georgia Ellis is Kitty. This is George Walsh inviting you to join us again next week for another story on Gunsmoke. Latest news follows, then Mitch Miller with tonight's guest stars on the CBS Radio Network.